ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين اتقوا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد عباد الله فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اجرنا الله واياكم من عذاب النار تكلمنا في الجمعه الماضيه عن الاسراء وقلنا ان لحديثنا بقيه حيث نصل ذلك بالمعراج هاتين الايتين العظيمتين التي وهبها الله سبحانه وتعالى لنبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لتكون احدى القرائن التي يحتج بها على قومه عند الله وقد جاء في في الحديث الصحيح عن انس رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بينما انا جالس في بيتي في مكه فاذا بسقف بيتي يفرج وقال خرج سقف بيتي فنزل جبريل عليه السلام فاخذ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام ففرج صدري ثم غسله بماء زمزم وجاء بقسط مليء حكمة وإيمانا ثم أفرغه في صدر نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم عرج به إلى السماء الدنيا فنادى جبريل أن افتح أي وقال في رواية فاستفتح جبريل فأجابه خازن السماء الدنيا قال من؟ قال جبريل قال ومن معك؟ قال معي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قال وقد أذن له هذا خازن السماء الدنيا يسأل جبريل هل أذن لنبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يصعد أم لا وفي هذا إخواني في الله نقطة مهمة بل لطيفة مهمة جدا حيث أن خازن السماء الدنيا سأل جبريل إن كان معه أحد أم لا وهذا إن دل على شيء يدل أن علم الغير منوط بالله سبحانه وتعالى فلو كان علم الغيب لغير الله لعلم ذلك الملك وهو في تلك المكانة وذلك المكان وتلك الحراس إلا أنه سأل لأنه لم يعلم إن كان معه أحد أم لا قال عليه الصلاة والسلام فصعد بنا جبريل إلى السماء الدنيا قال فإذا برجل جالس عن يمينه أسودة وعن شماله أسودة فإذا نظر عن يمينه ضحك وإذا نظر عن شماله بكى قال عليه الصلاة والسلام فقلت لجبريل من هذا فقال جبريل عليه السلام على نبينا أفضل الصلوات والتسليم قال هذا آدم قال فما باله إذا رأى عن يمينه يضحك وعن شماله يبكي قال فإنه جالس وعن يمينه ذريته نسمة من نسائم آدم عليه السلام وعن شماله ذريته قال فأما الذين عن يمينه فأهل الجنة فإذا نظر إليهم ضحك ضحك السعادة ببشرهم وفوزهم بالجنة وقال أما الذين عن شماله فهم أهل النار من ذريته 
وهو يبكي حزنا وبرقا على مآله فأقبل آدم عليه السلام أو نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام على آدم قال في الرواية فإذا بي بآدم فقال آدم عليه السلام مرحبا بالنبي الصالح مرحبا بالابن الصالح وهذه لطيفة أخرى حيث أن آدم عليه السلام نادى نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم بالابن لامتداد السلالة النبوية إلى آدم عليه السلام أبو البشر حيث ينتهي إليه كل مخلوقات الله وهذا فيه رد على من قال أن آدم ليس أول البشر فهناك من ظهر علينا في هذه الزمان بأعاجيب يكاد يتفتق لها الجميع حيث خرج علينا أحد المنتسبين للعلم يقول أن آدم ليس أول خلق الله وفي السنة ألف دليل على أن آدم عليه السلام أول خلق الله وفي كتاب الله ما يكفي ثم قال فانطلقنا إلى السماء الثانية ولو عرج بي إلى السماء الثانية قال الراوي في هذه الرواية قال لم يرد ترتيب الأنبياء من كان قبل ومن كان بعد ولكنه قال أنه مر على عيسى وإدريس وموسى وهارون ويوسف عليه السلام وقد قال في يوسف عليه السلام أنه قد وهب شطر الجمال أو شطر الحسن كما جاء في هذه الرواية The hadith that we're gonna continue speaking with is hadith narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه The last week we have spoken about the important miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have granted his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم which is Isra the trip from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis and the prayer in Masjid al-Aqsa that trip the Kuffar Quraysh found it really hard to believe they couldn't understand how a person goes to a place like Bayt al-Maqdis and come back at the same night but this is the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu and the other hadith we said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was granted an animal that is bigger than the mule and smaller than the donkey. The Prophet Sallallahu said that animal step is at the end of its sight. That was a small glance of how fast that animal was. The hadith continues in the narration of Anas where he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting in his house in Mecca and the Prophet Sallallahu said that the ceiling of my house was opened and Jibreel Alayhi Salaam descended after that he grabbed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he opened his chest and he cleaned it with the water of Zamzam after that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Jibreel grabbed a tray filled with wisdom and faith and filled his chest with that tray. In that hadith, he indicated that that was the point that the Prophet Wasallam was washed out from everything, even the shaitan sharing his heart. From that, the Prophet Wasallam never made a mistake. After that, the Prophet Sallallahu said, then we ascended to the first heaven. And Jibreel called the guard of the first heaven and said, Open. The guard of the first heaven asked Jibreel, alayhi salam, who is it? And this is a very important thing, brothers. Because in this narration, we learn that there is no one capable of knowing unknown or the unknown things, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't tell me that there is a man who knows the unknown. That is impossible. Because if it was possible, it would have been granted to a preacher who is in a better place and created from a better source. We are created from mud and the malaika were created from nur and the light. Yet, he didn't know who was it. And it goes further. And Jibreel alayhi salam tells him, responding, it is Jibreel. And the angel asked him back, 
Is there anyone with you? And this is another indication that they don't know the unknown. So, Jibreel alayhi salam responded, it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The angel asked him back, was he allowed to come up here? Jibreel alayhi salam responded, yes, he was. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, and then we ascended in the first heaven, and I saw a man. He was sitting, and next to his right, there was people. And to his left, there was people. Every time he looks to his right, he smiles and laughs. And every time he looks to his left, he cries. So, the Prophet was taken by wonder. And he wanted to know who is it. So he asked Jibreel and he told him, who was he? Jibreel alayhi salam responded, this is Adam alayhi salam. And the Prophet salam asked why he is doing what he is doing. The Jibreel alayhi salam responded saying that whenever he looked to his right, he smiles because these are the people of his offspring that are going to the Jannah or the people of the Jannah. And every time he looked to his left side and he cries in sadness, he looks at his offspring who are they going to the hellfire. This is a very important indication that Adam alayhi salam was the first man created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays, there are people who come along and say that it wasn't Adam the first one who was created. That is a mistake. If there was someone before Adam alayhi salam, then he should have been the father of all mankind. Adam alayhi salam was approached by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He smiled at his face and he said, Welcome, pious prophet, pious son. And that means that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as everyone, his grandfather or his father is Adam alayhi salam. Where all the mankind meets. <coughs> and then after that, the narrator said, in this narration, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, then the Prophet sallallahu passed by different messengers. There was no certain or no certainty of who was first and who was next. But yet, the Prophet sallallahu passes by Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Idris alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam, and in other narration, he said, in the first or the second heaven, he met Isa alayhi salam and his cousin Yahya alayhi salam. Every time he comes by a prophet, a prophet greet him, saying, Oh, welcome, pious prophet, pious <coughs> brother, except for Adam alayhi salam. And then he said, in the fifth or in the fifth heaven, he met Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam said, greeting, oh welcome, pious prophet and pious brother. After that, he said, we ascended to the sixth heaven where he met Ibrahim alayhi salam. Yet Ibrahim alayhi salam he greeted him differently. Yes, he said, Oh, welcome, pious prophet. But then he said, Oh, welcome, pious son. Because the Prophet Sallallahu father is Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, one of his great grandfathers. And he have descri described that in another hadith where he named all his parents up to Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. And then, after that, he said, we ascended to the seventh heaven, where I heard the creak of the pens. Everything was written. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoined on my ummah 50 salat, 50 prayers. We have hard time to keep track of the five. Imagine if it was 50. The Prophet 
never said no. When he descended, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and then Moses stopped me, Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam had a great experience with Bani Israel. With every command, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a rule upon them, they always go back to him. They always ask him details. They always reject the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam was experienced with the nature of human. So he told Ibrahim Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa go back to your Lord and tell him to make it less. For your people will never be able to carry on with this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went back and forth asking for less until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it five. And he said, it is five in the action, 50 in the reward. When Muhammad sallam, came by Moses alayhi salam, Musa told him, go back. Ask him again. Look at what Musa alayhi salam asking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, to do. He's asking him to go back and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it less than five. Because he knew that there will be people who will never keep those five altogether. And we are seeing this nowadays. Sadly, many people only praise on Fridays. Or when there is special ceremonies. Or when there is a special event. They show up for praise. But for the rest, Allahu A'lam what they are thinking. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have said in a very simple and plain hadith. He said, إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ الصَّلَاةُ فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرُ وَقَالَ فِي رِوَاهِ الْعَهْدُ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ الصَّلَاةُ فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرُ The Prophet وسلم, said the only thing make a difference between a Muslim and a non-believer is the prayer. Whenever you quit the prayer, you quit Islam. As he said, sallallahu alayhi wa the scholars went on and described this and they said even a person who quit or prays some of the prayers and does not pray the others. This hadith apply on him. You have to bring them because they are compulsory. They are not optional. You cannot bring some and leave some. There is no choices here. The bottom line of this hadith 